Hello and welcome everyone to the Break Time Podcast. Here we just kind of chill and talk about whatever interests us. We'll start somewhere and see where it takes us. I'm Eric, and as always, I'm joined by our two good friends, Ryan and Jake. Hello! Uh, that's me! Oh, that is you. That is that's also, I'm this, the first of those. He said my name first, right? Yes, I did. I did say Ryan. Yeah, but I answered first, so therefore, yeah. who's really first? YouTube comments have taught me one thing. All that matters is that you're first. I guess, yeah, but he said my name first. Also, hello, you're back! Hi! No, wait, no! You, you two may have noticed I have been very quiet the last two weeks. You've also been invisible. Yeah, that is because I was, in fact, not here. <laughs> I see. Oh my god, you tricked me. So, uh, how have you been these last two weeks? Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, oh, that's a, that's a good sign. Uh-oh. <laughs> It was bad. It was re- it was pretty bad. But it was mostly my fault. It was more like a what's it called? It was like a growing up experience experience into adulthood. Okay. But before I go into myself, well, how are you guys doing? Um, uh, I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing pretty, pretty well. good. I guess I'm still a wee lad. I haven't had such an agonizing growing up uh, experience. Tiny Jake. Yeah. Just a little boy. Little. Yeah, apparently, I, I guess we're doing better compared to how whatever you've been going through the last two weeks. <laughs> Casually says cliffhanger. <laughs> now, how are you two doing? First, I'd like to yeah. thank our sponsor. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta leave it suspenseful. Yeah. So, uh, you go, well, what have you been... I gotta happening? know now. Yeah. <laughs> we're intrigued. We've been intrigued for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I guess we gotta start somewhere. So... Alright, so this started back in 2019, in my sophomore undergrad. It is when I got my most expensive possession, my desktop. I see. Alright, so there's a, I have some history with it. Like, a month or two afterwards, it decided to break. As mm-hmm. in, when it on the monitor display, it showed up like little green particles on the screen. It looked like something out of the Matrix, but it would not go away. And it, I, I was definitely, I was talking to some, like, mechanical engineering friends and people who have built their PCs before, and they said that your GPU is probably broken, which is bad. <laughs> I need my GPU. Very much so. Yeah, so we did troubleshoot it down to our GPU. I called someone from Dell. This was an Alienware Dell computer. I do not recommend them anymore. After my, oh. <laughs> after ex- after the experience, I will just I will proceed to talk about. Well, I guess Dell's never going to sponsor us now, right? So <laughs> it was only like a month or two after I bought, so it's still under warranty. Some guy came over to my college dorm with a new GPU and just replaced the thing. And since since then, my computer's been pretty fine, except for one thing: it gets very loud when it's under load. The, like, let's say when I'm playing a game, it sounds like the fans are gonna take off. Like, it gets super loud. It's like a motorcycle. It's very loud. Yeah. You, guys, you guys might have heard it before when I didn't have Discord Discord noise suppression. You just hear, like, a whirring in the background. I feel like I might have. The loud. It sounds, I mean, it sounds familiar, but I can't pinpoint a time it's a specific time it's ever happened yeah you've probably heard it before sometimes but when i when i turn noise suppression on you can't hear it anymore but it's been doing that for like three years up to now and then one day my dad walks by my room and he hears the whirring of and he's like does that sound okay to you <laughs> <laughs> this is not okay son <laughs> it does not sound okay all right so now it's it's been in, in like the back of my mind for a very long time about like how loud it is, so I finally looked into it. Like perhaps it's the fans, perhaps it's getting too hot. I downloaded some PC software to track like how the how the hardware specs are doing, and I see when it's under load, the CPU gets up to about ninety degrees Celsius, which is really that's high. almost the temperature of boiling water. That is very high. That is <laughs> that's bad not for okay. Your CPU. Yeah, I'm surprised Everything your computer is not okay. didn't How did it work? It's been like this for three years, dude. How? <laughs> <Ow! laughs> 
And you thought nothing was. F you thought everything was just fine. Thought, Did you okay. ever like put your hand behind? The heat was still coming out shit, when I was blowing the fan, so was, I thought it was still okay. Right, so the CPU is at 90 degrees. That's bad. It lowers the expect life expectancy, and it might break it or fry your motherboard. It'll fry. Yeah, I would assume it would. Yeah. And I've I've been looking into other stuff specifically for Dell Alienware. Is that their heating, their heating system, is not good. The case is very cramped. Like the power supply is above everything. Like right directly above everything so like the heat's everywhere it's hard to the air circulation is really bad and the stock fans and thermal paste they use is also very bad these are all things i learned like a couple weeks ago when researching this stuff like i'm learning more about computer engineering stuff that i've never mm -hmm. learned before so i was talking with some with some friends who have built their own pc before and they are recommending me to perhaps change the thermal pace between the CPU and heatsink, it's how like you get, it's how you transfer the heat away from the CPU, so it could like yeah. blow out. They also recommended to upgrade the fans because apparently, <clears throat> um, Dell gave me stock, stock fans that were very bad and very loud. So I set off, I set aside one weekend. For me to try to fix these things, I had bought three fans off of Amazon that my friend recommended. I also double check. I also checked online to make sure they're like compatible with my motherboard and stuff. So I s so I set aside a weekend. I started mm -hmm. taking apart. I started opening my PC and taking it apart. I've done it before one time when my GPU broke just to look inside. And <laughs> oh my god, it was so dusty in there. I had not cleaned the inside in like three years. Let me, oh, I have, let me. I took a picture of my heat sink. Where is it? Let me post it. Right, here is a picture of my heat sink when I took it out. My file is too powerful. Oh no, it is too powerful. The heat sink is too hot. Oh. You'll, and there's so much dust listeners. that can't capture it. Yeah, audio listeners are gonna be kind of left out, but we'll try to describe it in as much detail as possible. It's like wearing a fur coat. That's how bad my heatsink was. It's beautiful. Oh, that sounds awful. More or less I, than a dryer sheet. I'm dreading what this is actually going to look oh, like. It's oh, it's beautiful. Oh my god! <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> I take it back. Words cannot describe what this looks like. <laughs> it's so bad. I. <laughs> you know when you change oh. the lint in your dryer? <laughs> no, th this is also a th this is also after drying, uh, wiping the thermal paste off. Thermal paste was in the middle, mm. but oh my god, it looks That's so bad. That's pretty not okay. It does not look good, right? Yeah. Can't, there's so much dust on there. I can catch fire. That's bad. But yeah, yeah 90 degrees Celsius. Yeah, yeah, but I think the problem was it was a, the problem was the thermal paste. I think it just got too old, or the one Dell put in was was not good. But I, yeah. the thermal paste was like dry and crunchy which i think is i think it's just it means it's just old it means not it's not transferring heat as well as it should be mm -hmm. so that's also probably one of the reasons why my cpu was getting way too hot so i was cleaning it i was changing it i was using my air pressure can to get all the dust out and then i i put i put everything back together all the thermal paste my three new fans like yes this looks good. I felt like confident through the whole thing because I had oh, some yeah. friends helping with, helping me throughout the whole process, and I had videos to watch and that also showed how to do it. I was like, "All right, cool." I changed the fans, put on the heatsink right. Should be good to go. So I go in to plug it in, and it doesn't turn on. <laughs> well, it does turn on, but it doesn't sh display anything on the monitor. And the, the power button on this computer is like a little alien head, and the alien head is flashing yellow. Which is like uh, a, which is like a, what's it called? It's like a debugging sign to tell you what's wrong with your computer. It was, so what, what I initially thought was it was, it was flashing yellow twice, it paused for like half a second, then it flashed yellow again. So I thought it, it meant it was error codes with two flashing lights and one flashing light, which I believe was... It was two different errors. I think one of them was mem regarding memory. The other one was regarding CPU. So I thought that was like a memory CPU problem. So I'm like taking out the RAM, putting it back in, 
resetting the CMOS battery, trying all this stuff just to like reset everything. And it does, it still does not work. I get the same three flashing lights. Then I ended up deciding to change the fans back <laughs> to the original stock. Ooh. Why would, why would changing the fan, I mean. Yeah, that's what I thought. never know. But yeah, like I have to try everything at this point, right? Because it's not mm -hmm. turning on. So I might as well revert it back to everything it was before. Okay, so I put that, I took, I took out the three fans. I put the three old ones back in. Try again, and it still doesn't work. I get the same error. Then I realize maybe it's not a two to one flashing light message. Maybe it might be a, it might be the message for three flashing lights. Even though they have like a, have a pause between a second and third flashing light. So I, I was confusing. I didn't know, but the, but the debugging message for three flashing lights was a motherboard problem, which is bad. The yes. motherboard's the heart of your computer. If that's dead, you need to get a new motherboard. So like after like two days of messing around with it, I just couldn't get it working. I couldn't find... Oh, other people had the same issue and none of their solutions worked for me on like any of the forms. So I ended up taking my computer to the hospital. I went to Central Computers, I think, like a couple miles away from me. I went to Central Computers, left it there for them to diagnose it. And guess what? It was a motherboard issue. <laughs> <laughs> Sad. <laughs> oh no. It was the dust like, oh is relying God. on the how dust. Did it, how does my motherboard break? I just I literally just changed the fans. Took the CPU out for a little bit, cleaned it. I was very careful with it. I was very careful. I my only thought My only thought of what could have happened is when you're messing with things, you accidentally like put some electricity through the motherboard, and that can fry things rarely. That's why people always talk about you should be grounded while messing with things, It, but it very rarely matters unless it's an older system or something you're about to sell and you need to be literally pristine. Or it could be a thing with your uh, power supply was outputting electricity incorrectly, and when you messed with it static throughout and inside of it, just fucked with the motherboard and fried yeah, it. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of things that could have happened, but... I don't know. Oh I, yeah, computers someone, are weird. Someone method. mentioned it could have been like the voltage from the fan too, but I did check that. I don't. I don't think it's the fan. Something just went wrong. It might just because it. Or is just unlucky was on those last legs. It could have just been like bad luck. Maybe something fried it or something. Maybe I. Uh, I wonder if it was the three years worth of dust just sitting on everything in your. Well, computer. he took it off. But he. But it was there for three years. <laughs> it was there the for three years. That was gathering dust. dust for three years inside there oh my god the air circulation is not good it's so hard to open my case too i have to get a screw like mo i know most of the modern cases there's maybe just like a button or clip you need to push just to open it yeah my case uh, just has a uh, thumb screw and then it slides off yeah my mine needs like i need to screw off a lid and then open it from the inside it's re really awkward mm. so i found it was motherboard issue I was kind of sad. I was like, there goes my self-esteem. I thought I did this pretty well. <laughs> I watched all these videos. I had friends help me, and it still didn't work. So I left it. Uh, I got it back from the hospital. Then I just decided to buy a new motherboard from Dell. The thing with Dell is a lot of their hardware parts are customized for their own company. Of course they are. Meaning the motherboard... It was like a Dell motherboard, meaning it had a lot of compatibility issues. So I couldn't just get like a like a different new motherboard, like an upgraded motherboard. I had to get one of the Dell ones again. You had to get to that get one you had. They they this is all part of their plan. Yeah, I had to get the one they had. It was three hundred dollars. Huh. My God, what a disaster! I I ended up returning the fans. It was on Amazon. I just returned it. It was pretty easy. That was kind of sad. I bought the fans. I put them together. They didn't work. They had to take them out. <laughs> That's possibly where the issue arose. Yeah. Was <laughs> they're like these aren't our fans. All right, time to kill ourselves. And then you know now <laughs> you have to buy a bunch of parts. <laughs> these now. aren't my fans. These aren't my babies. This is this is that's that's probably in Dell that is probably inside all of Dell's hardware. It's just hardwired that if anything that is incompatible with it is inputted into it, it just 
fries itself. It has a <laughs> self destructive <laughs> self destructive system. Yeah. That's what it has, it has to be what it is. So then you're forced to buy new parts for everything, including fans. You should have just bought it from Dell and paid like twice as much as you would off of Amazon. Oh, they're shitty stock fans that sound like a motorcycle. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so bad. This is why I don't recommend anyone. Wait, so to you're get on the old thing again. Don't get it anywhere. Buy something else. <laughs> buy yeah. a different peer. Does it still sound like a motorcycle? This episode of the Break Time Podcast is not sponsored by <laughs> Dell. Because we hate them apparently. Because Eric had a bad experience. Yes, it was so bad. Okay, I got them. I got my mic from the Dell. That was this mic's fine. At least this mic fine. doesn't have compatibility issues. <laughs> well, it's it's just like a That's USB it's also mic, Dell. right? Or, or something. It's just a USB mic. A little, yeah. a little blue snowball. I see. Yeah, you shouldn't have any problems with it. I know. better not. It's internal <laughs> hardware. They're all like, this isn't yeah. Dell. Yeah, this isn't Dell. Dell. Oh, microphone explodes. <laughs> Anyways. So yeah, my computer broke for like, I was out of a desktop for like two weeks. This was also mm-hmm. during the first week at my new job. Uh, yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh, that was bad. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're working remotely, right? Yeah, I'm working remotely. So losing my desktop was pretty bad. It made the onboarding mm. very awkward. They did send me their own... Well, well, they they sent me a work computer, yeah. but it was a Mac. I've never used the Mac before, which is I I only use Windows, so I had to learn how to use the Mac, and I only had to use the Mac because I didn't have my desktop. It was a little sad. Yeah, and how did you like the Mac experience? Oh God, why is, why okay? Why is the Apple sign? No, is it the Apple sign? No, the command button. Yeah, there's a command button on Apple keyboards. Because I, I, I always use, use control. Usually control yeah. on Windows correlates to command on Apple. But they're in different mm-hmm. positions and it's... It, no. It messes, up my, it messes up my hand coordination. They have to be different so that people become brand loyal. It That's how they get weird. you. That's how they get you. They muscle memory you. They put it into your muscle memory so that you stay with their products and because so the other one doesn't work. Keyboard. Yeah, so far I'm not a huge fan of the Mac. It's mm-hmm. they they also have like a digital touch bar at the top for yeah, the keyboard. Yeah, I do know about that stuff. I I don't like it. It it keeps changing away from the buttons I want it to be. There's probably settings to do that, but I haven't figured it out yet. This episode of the Break Time Podcast is also not sponsored <laughs> by Apple because. Eric dislikes them too, and so we'll stand with him. Also, uh, today we learn Eric hates computers. I hate yeah. computers. Oh man, you got your masters and your bachelors in computer science, but you hate computers. I hate computers. I hate them all. <laughs> Anyways, that was that was only that was only one part of my terrible two weeks. Oh no! Okay. Oh wait, there's more. There's more. <laughs> All right, so this is oh, this is the same. This is the weekend of the same week where I broke my computer. Okay. We were planning to go to Pismo Beach. It's like a like as a little retreat for like one day. It was like celebrating that I graduated. So like, why not? We haven't been outside for a while. We missed our. We weren't able to go to our Japan trip a couple years ago because of COVID, and since then we yeah. haven't really gone out anywhere. But now, like COVID's died down a little bit. We're still careful about it. We wear masks, but. We want to spend some time at Pismo and Reach. We were planning to ride the. We were planning to rent an ATV over there. They have a very, like, very long stretch of the beach of sand dunes where you could rent an ATV and ride in, like, a designated area for it. That sounds cool. It sounds shit. super fun. I've never ro- ridden an ATV before. Neither have I. So, Pismo Beach is around, like, three hours from me. So, I woke up early, got, got in the car pretty early and we started driving down to Pismo Beach and an hour into the trip I realized I didn't bring my wallet I forgot to bring my wallet which has my driver's license in it you need yes. your driver's license to ride the ATV oh no yeah uh, <laughs> oh it was so bad I felt so stupid I felt embarrassed I felt ashamed I felt irresponsible we ended up driving back home another hour because we were at, we were an hour into the drive so we just drove back home 
because I stupidly forgot to bring my wallet. Yeah, nice college degree, kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. nice college degree. <laughs> nice two college degrees. <laughs> nice college degree, idiot. Anyways, we just decided not to go to Pismo Beach that day, because then it'll be another Probably six really hours late. of driving. We just ended up six, going... Right? Six uh, hours? Yeah, three hours there, three hours back. Oh, okay. This is I don't know where this place is. <laughs> Why would you go to a beach that's three hours away? It ha it's because like the the little town there is pretty good. It has very good food. There's a mm. there's a cafe called Splash which has which has very good clam chowder and a lot of good I seafood see. restaurants there. So we wanted to go there. You're in I'm you're in Sacramento, right? So maybe you're like I, uh, five five hours away, ish. Uh, is it worth? I mean, I do enjoy a good clam chowder, but I'm not sure if five hours is is enough to warrant the clam chowder. I think you could find a similar quality clam chowder within five hours. Possibly. This episode of the Break Time Podcast is sponsored by Campbell's Chunky Soups. Ooh. My favorite is the clam chowder. Really? Or not actually. Less than five hours away, it. you could get a Campbell's soup? Yeah, it's just at your local grocery store. Or if it's already in your pantry, it's just like 15 minutes of just heating the goddamn thing up. And you got a clam chowder. <laughs> oh, it's God. probably just as good as the clam chowder at Pismo Beach. Nah, frozen clam chowder I've had before. It is not as good. Frozen? That's canned. Yeah, canned. Oh, it's canned? Oh, it's still not Canned to perfection. Canned no. is the future. <laughs> no, I stay away from canned foods. I'm not a fan. Yeah, it's not. It's not great. I haven't. I actually haven't had canned food. I mean, if you want decent clam chowder, you can go to Boudin. A lot of names being, a lot of names being thrown around. Boudin. How do you spell that? B o u d i n. They are famous for their sour bread dough. Sourdough bread. Sour bread dough. Dough bread. No. It's so <laughs> sour bread dough. Sour bread dough. Bread. Sour dough, dough bread. Dough bread. <laughs> sour dough bread. <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah, but you're giving you, it your all. I know what you mean, but I'm just concerned that you were unable to say it. <laughs> uh, sour bread dough. You know. <laughs> Oh, I'm a mess. My whole past God. two weeks. Yeah, your entire two weeks have been a <laughs> oh, mess. Oh, it's terrible. Because when I think sour bread dough, I just think of they give you a lump of dough and they just like coat the thing. And it's sour. Yeah, you guys yeah, 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 you coat can the coat thing you and, and I don't know, uh, Sour Patch Kids stuff. The stuff that's on the outside of Sour Patch Kids. They what? just coat <laughs> a bunch of dough <laughs> in sour. there. They throw it on the table and they're like, Boudin, this is Boudin. what we're known for. <laughs> Uh, anyways. We don't even bake it. It's just a, a lump of dough that's just really sour. <laughs> Did you end up going to the ATV place at least? Yeah, we went the next day. We I I, I miserably failed on Saturday, so we went on Sunday. <laughs> we, and, we, I, and I brought okay? my wallet. I have now <laughs> I have now made a habit to bring my wallet whenever I go outside. So this is also a learning experience for me. I will Wait, never forget. This to wasn't the thing that you just did before. No, I did usually. Okay, in like, <laughs> okay, in like college and stuff, I left my wallet in my bag, so I just I just bring my bag wherever I go. Mm. So I did not have the habit of putting wallets in my in my pocket. Usually, I'll just leave it in my bag. It's oh, it was yeah. oh, it was always sitting in my bag when I got home too. So I just I just <laughs> honestly forgot to bring it. So now I have a habit of just keeping it in my pocket when I go out. Yeah, but I think it takes it's one. It takes one sour experience to change your life. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. How is the ATVs? Did you do any sick flips on the sand dunes? No, no you get. You get okay. I went. You're to, really so, not supposed to flip. <laughs> no, you are not supposed to do anything crazy on the ATVs. When I went there, there was like a whole, like thirty minute video, instructional video, instructional and safety video you have to watch before you get to ride the ATV and at the end of the video they go through all the different charges they can charge you for depending on how bad you are driving the ATV like if you damage it if you need to call help if you turn what what's it called if you like flip your ATV over i think it's called a turnover or if you do like mm -hmm. if they will see you do anything dangerous with the ATV they're going to charge you like hundreds of dollars for it going to have to 
Sorry, gonna have to fine you a hundred dollars for that sick flip. Yeah, that was Were sick. you successfully like, not you need to pay some stupid. money for that. <laughs> Were you successfully not stupid and didn't flip? Yes, the ATV? I was very careful when driving. I am a good driver. Nice. Even on ATVs. Okay, the problem the problem when we went that day is it was very windy. Like un unbelievably windy. Like I we there were there were things we could rent out, like we could rent out goggles and gloves. But I'm wearing glasses, so the goggles wouldn't really fit on me. Especially if especially when I'm also wearing a helmet at the same time. Yeah. yeah so well, I was your... so we, we just rented A T V for an hour. We were just exploring around. They had like a they had like a sand dune highway and like a little playpen to like go up and down slopes. So I was like it was pretty cool. But it was so windy. Every time we face the ocean, just like sand would just blast into my face. <laughs> Death. I I'm still finding sand in my clothes like a week uh, after. <laughs> There's so much sand. There was so much sand. sand. Sand gets everywhere. It was like in in my shoes. It felt like I was just walking in sand. There was like a, an inch of sand in my shoes. There was so mm -hmm. much sand. I'm surprised there was any room for your foot. It didn't feel bad though. Walking on sand does feel nice, but it was all in my shoes, and they're still in my shoe. Yeah, the ATV stuff, pretty fun. I recommend it. Try to go on a day that is not very windy. <laughs> not windy. Yeah. yeah. When it's windy, when it's not windy, you'll be fine. I can't believe you have to pay to do sick flips on your <laughs> ATV. Man. Well, they if you have be your paying own me. ATV or your own buggy, you could do your own flips. You could. Yeah, break. if you bring, there's people who yeah. bring their own ATVs. We rented it, so they have like there's restrictions. But if you bring your own, I've saw I've saw a bunch of people doing their own stuff, like doing drifting, doing yeah. sick jumps that I couldn't do if I didn't want to pay hundreds of dollars. Mm. The the liberties you have when you bring your own recreational vehicle is an ATV technically a recreational vehicle. Um, it's, you know, I mean, it's also just a vehicle. <laughs> it is, but you know, the, you know, RVs are typically they have a the recreational vehicle. RV usually has a very specific connotation. But honestly, I think that any vehicle could be a recreational vehicle if you drive it for fun. Oh yeah. ATV. Well, yeah. Well, hey, you know what? Air is also a type of terrain. I think you should be completely fine if the thing flies into the air or if you do sick flips on it. They shouldn't fine you for anything, because, hey, you made it. Maybe if you fail the flip, then you have to pay, because they're like, God, you... Yeah, you failed. No. Yeah, you failed. Yeah. Yeah. You suck. Yeah, you suck. Give us money. <laughs> yeah, I totally was that. That was pretty cool. We had some very nice seafood. We went to... We went to this place called Splash. I didn't even mention it before. Splash. They have good clam chowder. For dinner, we went to a... It was a crab restaurant. We got, like, a... We got, like, the seafood bucket for dinner. It was... Uh, bucket. The seafood, How refined. The seafood bucket. And the thing is, it said they will dump it on our table. I thought they were joking. They literally dumped it on our table. Like, no plates... They had a giant bucket of seafood and just poured it all over our table for us to I'm eat. thinking I'm thinking a giant metal bucket. It was. It was a giant metal bucket. Oh yeah. Yeah, a giant a metal bucket of seafood. They just dumped it. They then they set the bucket on the sides like here, this is where like all your all like, shells and whatnot go. I have a picture of so, it, but it's not that so good. So there's is there just a is just a bunch of seafood just lying on a table? Yes, that is that is what I took a picture of. You will notice there's sounds... no plate below any of it. That that is like a pa wow. That's a lot of seafood. It's like a paper cover they just put over the table. Okay, yeah. But they well, <laughs> they literally dumped it on the table. I thought it was a joke. <laughs> no, they're totally serious. It like, makes sense. Yeah, here you go. You filthy animals, eat up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, what did you expect ordering something called the bucket? <laughs> the bucket. <laughs> so, you and your folks are just hanging out at the restaurant, looking at the menu, you're like, damn, the bucket. <laughs> and it, it was good seafood. It was like, I don't know. It was like, we, should we try this bucket thing? Mm, the trout looks pretty good. I don't know, fellas. What about the bucket? <laughs> bucket? 
I'm just imagining a bunch of people, a bunch of refined folk, proper English folk, just being like, hmm, what shall we on what shall we order from this restaurant today, sir? Bucket. So what would you it's like, give me the bucket. It's just for, for a <laughs> split bucket. second, the facade drops. It's from, hmm, I think I'll have the bucket. And then uh and then they go straight back into their prim and proper persona. <laughs> it's impossible to say that without sounding super unrefined, though, because it's 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 called the bucket. What else is it gonna be? You could if it was a seafood platter, then that sounds bit more refined than a bucket. Nah, bucket, bucket. <laughs> Guy go always for the bucket. Jeez, yeah. I've only kind of adopted seafood more openly in recent years. So, as a kid. I kind of turned my nose up at seafood. Is that the correct way? Is that the correct? That sounds decision? reasonable to me. Yeah, I yeah. know. I know a few people who are kind of not seafood fans. They think they're like water bugs, and they don't want to eat bugs. Or it's or mm. like the texture of like things like crab and shrimp. They really don't like. Mm. So it's very very interesting on what people think about seafood. I think it's delicious. Yeah, I don't know. I, I uh... do as well. I liked seafood as a kid before I liked, like, beef or chicken. Sounds pretty okay to me. Last podcast, I was talking about how nigiri sushi and sashimi are, like, my favorite foods, and that is my... But the thing is that I didn't adopt that until, I think, like, freshman year of college is the first time I ever had sashimi, and I was like, oh my god, I'm in love, I love this! <laughs> and now it's become it's become my favorite food of all time. Because nice. I... Yeah, they're they're Very okay like for it. me if I eat it like sparingly, but if I eat like a bunch at once, I'm like this is kind of getting kind of boring. I'm eating a lot of raw food. This probably isn't that good. Hey, no way! I'm gonna argue with that with you there. I am very passionate about sashimi, and there is a difference between every single bit of fish. And I love the fact that every single bit of fish, just simply the different type of fish, tastes so significantly different from the other fish that it is a wonderful experience for me, and it's it's a great. I love it. I wish I could say Fish. more, but that's, that's what more can I say than the fact that I love it? Like when I when I go to sushi places, I usually like getting the rolls, like like yeah. the sushi rolls that have like a bunch of stuff in it. I think those are more flavorful to me than like sashimi or nigiri. Mm-hmm. There's more stuff. In yeah, because I remember for my, one time for my dad's birthday, he wanted sushi, so he went to a sushi place, got a very large sushi platter, but most of it was nigiri. There was only like one roll of eight pieces on there, and we mm-hmm. we ate it, and I was like, we all decided, wow, I wish we got more rolls. <laughs> <sighs> Man, so I I'm a fan of the simplicity of it because in my eyes, there's none of that other of uh, all of that other stuff to get in the way of what I really want. Just simply soy sauce, a little bit of wasabi, some ginger, sashimi. And rice, that's all I need, and it's I love it so much. Yeah. But I can see the, the roll argument. Yeah. I Pers- might... Personally, I like the more flavors on the roll. I think mm-hmm. they could be more creative. They're, they're also more creative with the rolls, too. They can add like a bunch of stuff to it, and it's very good. It is, but all that stuff gets in the way. My uh, favorite it's... thing to get at a sushi place is just the plain raw salmon over rice, and I'll eat that until I'm full. And it makes me happy. It's a lovely Sushi flavor. rice or just normal just white rice? Just the sushi rice. rice. Ah. Just plain salmon. Is there a specific name that you call it, or do you just say, can I get a salmon uh, I'd rice? look through the menu, figure out what the name is, and then promptly forget it most of the time, is the top ah. line. Well, now that you're learning Japanese, you gotta yeah, get I every should, single bit of practice attention. that you can get. Know. Yeah, pay attention to So, like, salmon rice bowl. What is it called? I thought you aren't you talking about like salmon nigiri? Is it like a slice of salmon or is it like salmon? No, it's probably well, it's probably sliced sashimi. That's probably of, sashimi of salmon. Yeah, and then or it's, it's just uh, on rice. It's a donburi sometimes. Yeah, I see. Teriyaki salmon. Sam- okay, well, I've got to go I find. I just get as close as I can to plain raw salmon over rice. Sashimi rice bowl Japanese. What we got? S- salmon sashimi bowl donburi with ikura. That is not sam- sashimi rice bowl chirashi don. That's not what I'm looking for. Whereas I want one that has the words in it. I would like to learn this too because I do not know. Is it called like shake don or something? I I don't. I want to know the real word, real the actual word. I don't want to leave it to assumptions. Yeah. And the real word. I send don. No, no. This is multiple different. Never mind, that's not right. Does this image look similar to what you're talking about? 
Yeah, it's pretty close. Usually, there I wouldn't put anything on it. So just that and the rice. I don't even I put soy sauce on it. Mm. I guess I guess you could just call it this? salmon so, so, sashimi with rice. Maybe. Yeah, no, but but I want to know the official Japanese name though. I, I see don't know, one because that I has... like most raw fish. I think mm -hmm. pretty much all of them are very tasty, and they all taste different. But I pretty much just universally think salmon is my favorite. Salmon is not bad. I used to be averse to it, well, the, the raw one, and now I love it a lot. Hey, wait a minute! If you put ikura and <clears throat> salmon on a on a bowl of rice, is that technically a, a no yakodon as well? <laughs> um, I don't know. The Oya specifics about these. So oyako. Oyako means mother and child, and usually oyakodon is a mixture of chicken and egg in some kind of mm -hmm. stock. You put that on rice, and that's uh, the typical oyakodon. Sure. Wait, so is, yeah. is it oyak oyakodon with, like, fish? Is it the fish and then their eggs on the side? Mother and child? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, it, that'd work. That'd work for sure. That's technically an oyakodon, but I bet people will be like, that's not it. That same Japanese with, uh, people would, would consider same, it something else. Same with mutton and lamb, right? Uh, <laughs> put that on rice, it's the... What if we... Oh, Mother and we just, child. How many different types of oyakodon can we technically make? Uh, we have... We have peanut shaku, and we could, peanut butter. <laughs> Nah, you know, got it, got it, yeah, got it. Chunky peanut butter is butter the double nutty butter. The what? The double nutty butter? Eric? What? Double nutty butter? What is that? Oh, wait, is that the chunk? Is that like chunky peanut butter? Yeah, I guess that's okay. another way to call it. It's like you yeah, have so more, <laughs> more nut for your butter ratio. I don't know. More nut for your butter. Ratio, so it's it's chunkier peanut butter. Yeah, Nutty. oops, mostly chunks peanut butter. Extra <laughs> chunky. <laughs> just a bag of peanuts. <laughs> yeah, is that is that, point, that, type of, is that peanut, peanut butter? You just take. You can make the peanut butter yourself. <laughs> just provide you to so. create peanut butter. Uh, veal and beef. On rice is also an oyakodon. That's true. Yeah. Tasty. <laughs> oh, I'm just thinking. It's so weird when it's two. When it's like two different types of meat, especially the egg and the meat is kind of pushing it. <laughs> I think that traditional oyakodon is like tasty. Meats. Yeah, that seems really heavy, dude. Like veal plus beef, mutton plus lamb. The the salmon the ikura plus the salmon was kind of kind of getting up there with me, but I also can see it. I saw a picture of it while I was scrolling through trying to find the name for this thing, which I haven't found yet. And it just it made me realize like, wait, that's technically also an oyakodon. Mm. Yeah, quail and, and quail egg is almost the same thing as chicken. No. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You don't have to Dude, go. Ugh, that's almost the same dish. It's actually. the same thing, yeah. But still, I'm just like just thinking about it. And it's like, oh. People don't eat turkey eggs too often. Not, Not usually. Turkey eggs? I've never heard of eating that. <laughs> I didn't even know that turkeys laid turkey eggs. eggs. I've never seen them. The really impressive eggs are ostrich eggs. Oh, they're turkey they're eggs are somewhere huge. between. Ostrich yeah. eggs, you have to use a tool to open, basically. Mm -hmm. They're so and thick and hard. If I'm not mistaken, the yolk is the size of a tennis ball. You could basically <laughs> equate an ostrich egg to, like, eight eggs. Yeah, I can't. I can't eat that many eggs. I hardly like egg a whole lot to begin with. If I'm so, absolutely but... starving, three. But that's already borderline. Mm. Why, yeah. does it, why does a turkey egg look like a golf ball? Does it? <laughs> it kinda does in some of these images. Let me see here. Turkey egg? Let's get Nat Geo on this. What is uh, a turkey goose, egg? Goose huh? eggs are huge. They're right? speckled. I wouldn't call. I wouldn't say they look like golf balls. Yeah, it, it like it like simulates the little holes in the golf balls. I think a little bit to me. I'm also yeah. seeing goose eggs with it. Goose eggs are also huge. Quail oh eggs are sad and tiny. Peacock they eggs. Are. Oh my! But they must be bursting with flavor. The bigger, the better. Right. No, well, no, well, well, quail eggs then. They must yeah, be really, really tasty. People eat quail eggs. They're just yeah. more expensive because quail is more expensive. 
And, they're, and they're probably and they're delicious, probably right. Probably. I mean, That's I've a... I've had both quail and quail egg before, and the quail just seemed like slightly fattier chicken, but it was also at a pretty nice restaurant, so it was probably just like fattier in general because mm. it was cooked that way. And the egg was fine. It it, it just reminded me of a normal egg, but tiny. <laughs> Well, then you get to act, when you when you see it, then you get to act like a giant who's eating food that's way too small. Yeah, for I him. think it was mostly for the shock factor. It was a boiled egg, so you could really see the form. Yeah, it's like whoa, it's so tiny. I'm little eating a little. tiny little egg. There's also squab and pigeon eggs. I don't think people ever eat pigeon eggs. I pigeon is hardly ever consumed. I mean, there they are some times in which it is. In some countries, Squab. it's much more common. Squab eggs? I guess so. I guess you would never, you know, see a the pin, pigeon on the uh, seat and decide, on the street and just decide to, you know, capture it and go take it home to eat. Yeah, the thing that's weird is they're borderline a protected species because people, quote-unquote, like them and there's, like, wildlife regulations and such. Honestly, mm -hmm. probably in no part. No small part, because, you know, pigeons are just doves, you know, the beautiful romantic animal. I don't know. I'm not a fan of doves either. And also, they're really stupid. Yeah. Yeah. I they don't know they why... look like rocks, and that's their entire mechanism. They look like rocks can fly and scream when they fly away, so then the one that's closest to the predator is probably the only one that will die because it screamed when it ran away. Yeah. So its defense mechanism is to like, is it to save itself? Just, it's to save the others. Yeah, no. Whoever, well, they all run away. It's just whichever one was closest just screams, and then that's probably the one that'll get it if any of them are getting it. And so it's yeah. just isolated to that. So every that's... every predator in the area goes for the same one. Mm. Poor bird. No, doves can go eat it out of hand. <laughs> so I don't like them at all. They're stupid. They shouldn't exist. <laughs> I've had squab once before. It's okay. It didn't. I don't have any strong impression of it. Uh, I think they. I like the white doves. The, the pigeons, I can do without. Hmm. Did you know that pigeons are one of the only birds to produce milk for their young? What? I didn't know that, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> However, it doesn't come from where you'd expect milk to come from, because, you know. Birds don't have mammaries. They're birds. So where does the milk come from? It's Eyeballs. essentially, it's <laughs> it's it's essentially the same kind of idea as regurgitated food that yeah. most birds give to their young. But pigeons concoct it into a milk-like substance for their young to drink. Oh my god, they do chemistry. Yeah, yeah. Oh and so pigeons are <laughs> one of the only bird dumb. species. No, no, no! I said doves were stupid. Pigeons are fine. Pigeons are cool because they produce milk for their young. Pigeons are stupid. I mean, doves I are dumb. Bad news. This is the same. No, they're not. They're slightly different. At least pigeons have some amount of reaction time. <laughs> you come up real what's close with a car, the, that uh, dove species, is going to die. What's your opinion of the species of dove called a pigeon dove? Is there the pigeon That's dove? That's what is that it is. Thing? Interesting. Well, if it's a dove, it's stupid. If it's a pigeon, it's cool because it produces milk <laughs> well, for its young. I mean, it's both, kinda. Well, do doves produce milk for their young? I don't think yes, so. They're too the stupid to do that. Does. No, they're too stupid to do that. Pigeons <laughs> are smart. Dove. Pigeons are <laughs> they're the, doves. Pigeons are so much more closer to mammals than other birds because <laughs> they produce milk for their young. Is that a good thing? Yeah, it means that they're more evolved, maybe? <laughs> Question mark. I think birds are newer than mammals. No, they're older than mammals. Really? Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, avian-like creatures have existed since before mammals existed. T uh, Interesting. I was, I was under the impression it was, like, fish, amphibian, reptile, uh, and then it was just, like, Mammal and then uh, bird was my impression of the timeline because there's like no. little mouse like things for a long time. I thought not as long as there have been reptiles and birds. Interesting. Because birds, 
Because well, if you take it this way, a lot of dinosaurs are theorized to have feathers, and also they have a lot of avian-like qualities. Mm. There are literally a there's a literally a type of an archetype of dinosaur that are called bird-like hipped dinosaurs. Yeah. So they could be some kind of link between, or some kind of bridging link, or some kind of branch between reptiles and birds. Yeah. And so. Archaeopteryx is also a prehistoric bird. I know a lot about dinosaurs and the such because I, 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 I believe was, you. This is mostly yeah. on just me yeah, thinking I, I do remember or this considering why I'm wrong. I believe they're also mm-hmm. loosely based off the T Rex. I think uh-huh. it was. I think it was. I think people found out that the T Rex did happen to have feathers. I think. Hmm. I, I, I mean, I my, that my somewhere. I I was under the impression that pretty much all alongside dinosaurs, there's. Or at least the later half, I don't know. That there is like these mouse like mammal things. I I wanna that, say like, that mammals were uh they were they were a much later development than everything else. Interesting. Yeah. And and I'm going I guess I'm dying on this hill that pigeons are the closest thing we got to a avian mammal hybrid because they produce milk for their young. I'm doubling down on that, I guess. <laughs> I know we we went off topic to food and dinosaurs, but that wasn't the end of my terrible weekend. Oh, you're not done? <laughs> oh no, no. <laughs> Wait, it's not how over. have you gone bad? You went there and had fun. Yeah, you had you had the bucket. No, no. <laughs> this this is this has been going on for a long time too, but it recently got okay. pretty bad over this okay. specific weekend. All right. It was. It started like I think I mentioned it before to you guys. It started like last December where I've been for some reason burping a lot. Mm. Yes, I I remember talking to you guys about it. Yes, I remember yeah. you were a burpster. Yeah, God, you just wouldn't stop. It, it, in fact, you burped more than you talked to us. No, no, I I muted myself <laughs> when I burped. <laughs> but I have been burping a lot for like the past four months. It is something's wrong. Right? Something's wrong. Maybe something I ate. It was when I was in grad school. I was eating out a lot. Maybe some raw food. Got some nasty, eating some nasty stuff. So recently, I managed to do a bunch of tests to try and find out what's causing the burping. And they found some, like, some bacteria stuff inside me. So, like, we oh. fin- we, they finally found it after, like, four months. After a bunch of tests. I had, like, do a bunch of blood tests, some other tests. So it was not, it was not fun. But they found it. Got now I'm on some medication to cure the bacteria, but one of the medication is called ciprofloraxin. It is a pretty strong medication that is used to treat infections, and one of the side effects is tendonitis. And lo and behold, uh, I am you al- got tendonitis. I am allergic <laughs> to ciprofloraxin. Okay. And my and you have tendonitis? My Achilles heel. Oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> Only my Achilles heel. All my other tendons are fine. But the the like an hour or two after I took my first ciprofloraxin pill, I could not move my ankles. <laughs> oh oh Jesus. no. Your Achilles <laughs> your Achilles heel was your heel. Yeah. It was not good. Doctor realized, allergic, alright, let's not take that ever again. So they gave me a different one. But, it's been like a week since then. My, I, I, I can walk fine. I can walk fine. <laughs> but I can still feel like a little tingle when walking. Because it's only a week. Tendons take a long time to heal. It could take like months. Oh yeah, I recently just sprained one of my fingers. I say recently in quotes. It's been like three months and I can still kind of feel it when I'm using it. Yeah, so I can still, like, feel it in my legs, but, like, it's not stiff, I can move it around. But, the problem is... Did you re- did you guys remember when I said I went to Ikea <laughs> this past yeah. week? Did you we die to- in Ikea? <laughs> right, so I, t- I took the Cipro <laughs> pill, then, like, okay, I can't move my legs very well. Then, like, three days later, I'm like, hey, let's go to Ikea. <laughs> Because we, we were planning oh, to go to no. Ikea anyways to buy, like, a new desk because we were, like, trying to set up a new office. But, I mean, we planned for it. But uh, I thought, like, oh, I can probably walk. It's probably not that big, right? 
I've never I've never been to IKEA before. Wow, IKEA was huge. It's <laughs> enormous. Yeah. yeah, it is enormous. I've never been yeah. there, and I regret going there because it was too big. Try wow. walking on. A, you try walking through that. I don't know where I was gonna go with that. Yeah, try going through that place with tendonitis on your ankles. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like maybe like the first and ten minutes. Like, great. oh, this is fine. This is fine. <laughs> And like after t- twenty minutes, you know, I'm like limping throughout each showroom through all the different furniture. I'm like, help me, and me, but it was worth it. The meatballs were very good. Is that is, is that, that was, really was worth, worth it? it? The meatballs were amazing, and their smoked salmon salad was also very good. I recommend it's, both. I I'm sensing a pattern here. It's that oh, you can go through the most horrible, horrific crap. That the world can throw at you, and everything will be fine as long as you get to eat something at the end of the day. <laughs> food, dr- food, drama. Are you gonna man. tell us about your tragic childhood and how close you are with your friends, and then bam, you're a real, actual, real life shonen protagonist? <laughs> no, right, as long as there's food at the end, it's fine. Really? You got tendonitis, you wasted an entire day because you forgot your wallet, you had every single orifice and also all of your clothing filled with sand, but that was all okay because you got seafood at the end of that trip, you got Swedish meatballs at the end of the furniture trip, and... Well, you you didn't say you got food at the end of the... at the end of the PC fiasco, though. I mean, that's kind of related. Well, he did say that one movies. was the bad part of the story. Oh yeah, that's right. That was that. Was, uh, <laughs> what if Dell sent you a hot dog at the end of the customer service? <laughs> Would it all been worth it? Oh, dude, their customer service was terrible. Oh my goodness. They, We're sorry for the terrible service that we provided you, Mister Who. Here is a complimentary Dell hot dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Okay. So, like, the customer service. It's, I think it's just, it's their routine, how they have to, like, go through all the different steps to try and, like, like, all the different debugging steps to make, to test if, like, a certain method works. Like, they have to go through it. Thing is, I already did them all on my own. So really, the customer service, I'm, like, telling the customer service, it was just them telling me what to do, and I'm just responding back, I already did that. <laughs> Like every single time, and hey, you needed. To, you know what you should have done is you should have flashed your two diplomas in their face to show you that you well, your two degrees in their face, saying, "Look, I know what I'm doing." Yeah, kind of, <laughs> kind of. Yeah, I know what I'm doing, but I broke my computer. Uh, help! <laughs> help me! Help! Help! Oh, oh, I forgot about this because my computer broke. I was like. My dad was thinking that we just buy a new one because it's already like three years old. Our other, my our other desktop in our home is like, oh god, it was running like Windows XP. It is so old, like extremely old. It's one of those like big white, big like not really white. Those it? powerful yellowing plastic. Yeah, it's like yeah, the yellow, yellow, like white like, 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 like this, Yeah, those look, huge whitish yellow those. desktop. Yeah. That's, it still has like oh. a. VHS er, VHS uh, insert and a CD. It was sold. There's a, um, I'm not sure if that's actually something that exists, but you're saying an actual VHS? No, no, no not VHS. Actual... Like a no, not VHS. Well, it's like a little disc. tape, like a little. T- I don't know what to call it. Like the smaller version of that. Oh, a cassette. It's cassette. Okay. Cassette. Yeah, it's very different. Yeah, it still, it still had a cassette and CD insert. It was sold. So my dad was like, maybe we just buy a new one. You can give me your broken one that you broke, <laughs> and then I'll, mm. we can buy, buy a new one, and I'll try to fix the one you broke. So I'm like, okay. So I was looking on PCs online. I was looking not at Dell. No, no Dell. I'm not yes, buying on Alienware. Not sponsored by Dell. Not sponsored. So I was by looking Dell. at HP. I was looking at this because we were thinking like, if if we're buying a new one, might as well get a good one, right? Get a recent one, modern one. It'll last long. It'll live up to its specs, I guess. And I was looking at the HP Omen 45L. It's called the Omen, don't buy it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well, I didn't say if it was good or a bad Omen. (laughs) It was... It looked good. The thing thing that really sold me was the the cooling system was good. It did liquid cooling, where, like, the, the different pipes sort of liquid went up 
to above the case, like like a little separate area for it, so that heat can go out of the tubes, out of the water. It's beautiful. The heating system actually works, and people are praising them for it. They even the HP even sells the case separately, if you want to like make it make your own for it. Mm -hmm. So like, and it has that's pretty cool. And a GTX thirty eighty, I think, and a very high end oh. CPU. I forgot the name. I think it was the i seven. One two seven zero zero K. It was like all very mm -hmm. high end stuff. It was like maybe two thousand something dollars. So we we were like, okay, this sounds good. So we buy it. So we we place the order on HP. Then the next morning, the order is canceled. We don't know why it got canceled. I tried talking to canceled. someone with HP, and they gave me a list of reasons of why it was canceled. And I was like, a list. This does not help More tell than me exactly one. why it got canceled. <laughs> Wait, was it canceled Wait, for a, every it's reason? It's a list of list? possible reasons why. Yeah, they or... gave me a list of possible reasons why your order was canceled. I was like, why? Just tell me why it was. It's not that hard. <laughs> Surely it can't be that hard. Just tell me why. We got refunded. <laughs> no, they want to. They, they want to turn it into a game. Or like you, like guess which one guess it was. Which one? Did your credit card get declined? Did we run out of stock? Apparently, when you decide to put in the order or some other system error, we don't know. You don't know, but you can try to. You figure decide out which you one. You decide. It is. Either ways, you're not getting your order. <laughs> and then when we check, when we tried to check, okay, so when we ordered it, there was one left in stock. Maybe this is why. Maybe it ran out of stock as we were trying to do it. It was like late at night. Then ne next morning, when you check again, it is out of stock. <laughs> it is gone. You can't even after it was canceled. We can't even order it again. But this turned out to be pretty good because we did end up fixing my computer, and I'm still using it. But now my dad doesn't get a new computer. <laughs> mm -hmm. He Damn. was gonna use my broken one. <laughs> Heart blessing in disguise. You, you got rid of your you got rid of your pillow computer or whatever it is. The one with the V. The one with the VCR in it, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah that one. <laughs> we ended up just, what's it called? Put it, we we took it to was it Staples. I think it was Staples. We just took it to Staples for recycling. We actually, we actually had mm -hmm. two of them, two of those desktops. We brought both, and a few other like very old tech stuff that we didn't need. This is the real blessing here, is that you, what you should really do is just build your own computer instead of relying on someone else to make it for you. Because no. I think the, the moral of the story is that you can't trust Hewlett Packard, you can't trust Dell, because they're going to mess it up in some way. I can't trust they're HP going to... either. What happened? I thought HP yeah. was good. I had great impressions they... until my order got canceled. Yeah, and they're like, guess why? <laughs> Yeah, you should you should totally do it. I built my own computer. I'm very happy with it, and it works great. And nothing has happened to it. You should do it too. See, I may it's have done my experience. major in computers, but I don't know anything about computers. Does that make sense? It's just don't Legos. Yeah. Yeah. It is. I, I was never a big fan of Legos. I'm I'm not good at building. I don't think I'm good fit for building. Oh yeah, do uh, do what's best for you. If it's too stressful or too hard, it's fine. Yeah. If I could have any computer, it would be an actually kind of nice computer in one of those, like, Windows XP or earlier cases, because I love how they look. They make me happy. So you'd have, you'd have, have modern like a normal hardware? have, computer with normal outputs yeah. just in one of those cases. That would be super fun to actually oh. see, because I think it'd be very deceptive, and I think it'd look crazy. I wish I knew about that. Maybe I could have sent you mine. The thing is, I don't know if I could... I would have to do some work because the plugs on the outside, I don't know if it would even remotely line up. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. I'd, I'd have to do research. And the thing is, there's so many of them. I'm sure I could get a case for like $3. Well, we, were, we were recycling any, it anyways. It's fine. I'm actually surprised that there isn't a product currently out there that makes your computer look like an old... Yeah, I want I want like... My dream computer would be, I would, I think I would run Linux. I think the next computer I'm going to get, I'm going to run Linux, because there's very few things that I need Windows for, and you could, like, have multiple OSs, and when you boot, you decide what to go into, but it'd be, like, primarily Linux. Um, 
and it would look like one of those old Windows computers, but it would actually be a nice computer. Uh, that that's the dream right there. That sounds amazing, and I'm honestly surprised that no products currently exist that allow you to do that. That could be interesting. I'd buy yeah. it. All all, all of the computer cases nowadays are all like, oh, look at all the LED futuristic lights. Like, hey, how about what no? If you want I some, want it to what look if, like can't I work we have in an some like a beige? Yeah, like can we get like a beige computer that looks like it's been just sitting out there, sitting out in the <laughs> yeah. sun for like fifty <laughs> years? Can, where's that case for people who want to relive can, the good old days? I know. I'll I'll put a glow on. I'll put glow in the dark stickers on it for the real experience. <laughs> oh yeah. Ooh, what if you you know that meme the Hot Wheels computer? Yeah. The Hot what if we built a modern computer that was housed inside that thing? That'd be fun too, but I don't know. I like the Hot Wheels computer less than the like really yeah. standard Windows XP. Or Vista I would computer totally, cases. I'd totally do that too. Oh my or, god, I, I what is this PC? <laughs> is this what? what you... <laughs> are you looking at pictures or something? Is this a Hot Wheels PC? Oh my god, is this what you got? Oh, you're looking at the Hot Wheels computer. I've never oh, seen this. Wheels. What is this? It's a it's Hot, a Hot Wheels, Wheels computer. Oh my god. <laughs> Hot Wheels made their own computer. It's probably like a yeah. prize in the sweepstakes or something. Hot Wheels computer. How much does this work? Yeah. This must be expensive. It's like an antique, right? Surely. For sale? How much I for sale? Shopping. On eBay. It appears as- oh wait, it looks like it's been done with the Hot Wheels computer at the very least. Because I'm seeing here someone turned the 90s Hot Wheels pre-built computer into a gaming monster. And there's just this picture of this guy playing Doom. On three monitor, on three <laughs> With separate. With the Hot Wheels computer, that makes it yeah, faster just, for real though. Just, just check it. Look at this. There's one on eBay Excellent. that sells for four thousand. Yeah. Oh, ah, uh, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, really it's, even using it's, the speakers. Very cool. At this point, it's considered an artifact of the '90s, and so it's going to be worth a lot because it's essentially a valuable relic of the past. I don't. I don't know if I could stand this setup. It's too blue. That's it's so problem, blue. Though. It's just the fact that it's blue. It's so blue. I can't look at it for so long. Oh, <laughs> uh, the Hot Wheels controller. Yes. But this is cool. Doesn't it look cool? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it makes it, it makes everything run faster. The Hot Wheels. Yeah. The flames. Alright, I think we're all out of time for this episode. It's been about an hour. It has, yeah. You can watch, listen to us live. Never mind, we don't have that yet. We don't have it. We have a Twitch, but we're not streaming there yet. If you just can't just say it, the it, thing anyway. You can't make it, no worries. <laughs> New episodes go up on Mondays at 12 p.m. PSD on your favorite podcasting platform, as well as on YouTube at youtube.com slash breaktimepodcast. That's youtube.com slash breaktimepodcast. Follow us on Twitter at ShatterpointGS if you want. Join us next week when we talk about whatever Ryan wants to talk about. I think you want to host next? I think it was the order. Yeah, we're yeah let's go with that. Ryan will talk next. Until okay. then, break time over.